Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about 10 gigabit ethernet. But in order to do that, we need this. So we're going to be talking about this. Stay tuned. All right, you guys, so this right here is a Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit ethernet adapter from CalDigit. We ordered this one on Amazon. Uh, nobody sent this to us, it's not a sponsored video or that we bought with our own monies. Um, this is the second one that we have. We have a few other ones like the OWC and some internal cards and things like that. But for external devices, like for instance, if you have a MacBook and you have Thunderbolt 3 ports, this is probably the one I would recommend. You, the OWC one is also just fine too. We'll have another video about that. But today we're gonna to talk about this. This one is from CalDigit and what it basically does is takes your Thunderbolt 3 port and gives you one RJ45 N base T port on an external adapter, okay? And because it is N base T, it does support one gigabit and 2.5 gigabit and five gigabit and also 10 gigabit ethernet, assuming you're using the right cable, but the adapter is capable for that, okay? It has some other features like Wake On LAN. It is Mac and Windows compatible. It has a two year limited warranty from the manufacturer from CalDigit. And in order to use this, you need to use Mac OS 10.13.6 or later or Windows 10 or later, all right? But this is what, the box looks like when you get it. We've already used it and a bunch of stuff and unbox it. So what you actually get in the box is this. The ethernet adapter or the external ethernet adapter looks pretty much like this. It's a pretty solid build, feels like a little heavy. I don't wanna, it feels a little too heavy to be aluminum, but we'll just say that some kind of metal, let's just say it's aluminum, okay? Um, it has one Thunderbolt port on the front or the back, depending on how you look at it. And you know it's Thunderbolt port because it has a Thunderbolt icon, okay? If it did, it did not have a Thunderbolt icon, it would just be a USB Type-C port, okay? On the other side, it has an n -base t connector RJ45 port, okay? And like I said, n -base t it supports more than just one and 10 gigabit ethernet, okay? Um, the entire body is pretty much in heatsink. So it does get warm, and if it does get warm, you don't need to worry, it is designed to get warm because the heat inside is being dissipated to the body outside. That's why it kind of has like this fin or heatsink type look on it, okay? It does have feet, like rubberized feet, so that it does help you keep it a little bit off the ground or the table or whatever you're setting it on, and that way it promotes airflow flowing through it. Interestingly designed enough, the, if you look at it, it has a big like airflow port that that kind of encourages, I guess, air to flow through it to do better cooling. It is not actively cooled, so it doesn't have a fan or something blowing on it, but it is a passively cooled device. Like I said, it does get warm, so if you put it in the area with good ventilation, it doesn't really have a problem. We've used these things for days on end without having any problems, but we usually have good airflow, like air purifiers and fans and even the computer fans and things like that going around. But so, that's what you really get with this. It's really a no frills, no no issues device. You just plug it in on a MacBook Pro. You just plug it in, or even on a Mac, you just plug it in and it works. You don't need to install drivers or any of that fun stuff. It just works, okay? On the bottom of the box, make sure you check the bottom of the box, pull the little thing out. There is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Do not throw it away because there is a cable hidden on the bottom of the box. CalDigit branded cable, and it does have a Thunderbolt icon on the cable, so that way you know it's a Thunderbolt 3 capable cable and a not a USB Type-C cable. So just in case you didn't know, a Thunderbolt cable can also support USB Type-C, but a USB Type-C cannot always support Thunderbolt 3. Keep that in mind. It's a pretty short cable. It's probably about 1, 1. 1.6 or 1.5 feet and it is a passive Thunderbolt 3 cable. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, the n -base T here, we'll talk a little bit about that before we really get into the testing, but because it does support multiple connection speeds, so what, um, there's like a light code that kind of blinks up there. So if you have two green lights, you know it's connected at 10 gigabit. If you have one green light and one orange light is connected at one gigabit, okay? So make sure you keep that in mind. You can kind of mess with the settings and stuff inside of your own Mac, but if you have this device and you have other uh, 10 gigabit network, why would you use anything that's not 10 gigs? So we're gonna get into that. So let me grab the computer and we'll be right back. All right, you guys, and we're back. So we're back here with the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, and we're going to be connecting this Thunderbolt to 10 gig Ethernet adapter to the MacBook. So in order to do that, all you really gotta do is connect it up and you gotta connect this up, okay? 
That's all there really is to it. If you're on a Mac, you don't need to install any drivers. If you're on a Windows, you probably need to install some kind of drivers. So this MacBook and the other server at the end, are, or the Mac server on the end, it's both running uh, Mac OS X Big Sur. Okay, that's the latest OS X version at this time of the video recording. So before we get into testing, let's talk a little bit about the cables, okay? So in order to get 10 gig ethernet or 10 gig speeds out of your connections, you need to be using at least, you need to be using good quality cable and you need to be using a minimum of CAT6 cable. This one right here is a CAT6A cable. You can use also CAT7 cable, but CAT6 is the minimum. If I were you, I would definitely try to use at least a CAT6A cable, even though you can get away with CAT6 because CAT6A is a little, has a little bit more stringent standards, which allows, which was really amended of CAT6 just to, so that you can really get 10 gigabit speeds. It's really designed to help you get 10 gigabit speeds. So make sure you get a good high quality CAT 6A cable that's shielded. And if you can, I would get the one that has individual pair shielded because the better quality cable you get, generally the better it's gonna be. A lot of times you'll see that it works fine, but if you look at the specifics and things, you'll see like retries and all that fun stuff. So actually not that fun stuff, but get a good cable, that's the end of that story. So get a cable, plug it in, and let's wait a little bit in order for it to connect. It doesn't connect right away. But while we are waiting for that to connect, one thing I will tell you about this CalDigit Connect Thunderbolt 2 Ethernet adapter is it doesn't have any lights on the front or back saying that it is plugged in when the cable is not connected. So when on the RJ45 ports, it has lights on it telling you that that the connection is working. So two green lights, like I said, is 10 gig. If you have one green, one orange, you're not at 10 gig, you're probably at, I think it's gigabit. So, but other than that, there's no real lights on here tell, saying that the, the adapter is working. On the OWC one, it does have a blue light on the back on the Thunderbolt port side that tells you that the adapter is powered on. On this one, it doesn't. So let's keep that in mind. So let's go see what's going on here. So here we are on the CalDigit. Nick, Nick, I just put for a network interface card. So if I go look at it, yours is probably gonna be set to DHCP. Mine just set to manual mainly because I wanted to hit, be on a specific network to, to connect to a specific server, okay? So none of that, none of this manual stuff right here is really important right now, but we will get into it in a little bit. So if you go to configure or hardware, and then you'll see that mine's set to manual, yours will probably automatic, be set to automatic. But the reason I set it this way is so that I can manually set certain things so I can show you during a test. So right now, this speed right here is set at 10 gig base T, full duplex flow control with MTU size of 1500, okay? So let's do a speed test. We're gonna be using a program called iPerf. So iPerf allows you to test socket to socket to an iPerf server. So the other end is running a 15 inch 2016 MacBook Pro with a Thunderbolt 3 to ethernet adapter. And we're going to be running this in iPerf client mode and hitting that server, okay? We'll see how this goes, but you're gonna get roughly around six to seven gigabits per second, okay? So the reason you're getting a lot of that is because there is a lot of overhead and things like that involved when you're sending a lot of packets really fast. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll go back into network preferences here and you'll see if you go into advanced, this hardware, when you set it to automatic, will automatically set to the default of, this will be auto-determined and the MTU size would be 1500. In order for you to really see the 10 gig speed benefits, you really need to start using jumbo frames. So on this hardware, you can actually enable on, on this configuration to use a jumbo, a frame size of pretty much 9,000, MTU size of 9,000, okay? If you don't know what that means, what it basically means is it comes down to, if you're sending a lot of packets really fast on 1500, maximum transmittable unit size you're you're sending there's a lot of overhead involved because you're sending a lot of packets really fast a jumbo frame really makes takes all those packets and just think of it as takes a bunch of small packets and makes one big packet okay that way every packet that you're getting still has still has overhead in it but now it's one small overhead versus thousands of little packets that have overhead. So because of that, it, you actually see a lot of benefit gained by using jumbo frames. So quick note, in order for this to work, you need your adapter having um, MTU size set to 9,000. There's custom sizes, but just use 9,000. 
the server or whatever you're connecting to needs to be have have the same MTU size set to whatever you're using to 9000 in this case. And if you're connecting through a network switch, your network switch needs to have jumbo frames enabled. Okay, if you don't have that, you're not going to see this, you're going to be setting it on your computer. And you're not going to see any benefits, you're going to be sitting on the server, you're not going to see any benefits, if the switch does not have it enabled. Okay, so make sure you keep that in mind. We hit apply, so it should be applied, but we'll go back and look at it. See right here, 10 gig base T, full duplex, flow control, jumbo frames, 9000. Okay, so now let's run this exact same test again. And we should get closer to about 9.6 or 9.7. There we go. Look, 9.6, 9.7, 9.2, 9.7. So right now we are connected to the other server at 10 gig, really 9.7 gig. 10 gigabit speeds. So this is important. It works really well, especially for us since we do YouTube videos in 4K now. So we have video files that we got to transfer back and forth. Um, I'm not going to show you a video of it transferring and copying to another server or whatnot, because that's going to be completely dependent on what you're using, the speeds of your network switch, the speeds of your servers, or your hard drives, or whatever you're running. So, but what I can tell you is that because we did a socket to socket connection on from client to the server and that connection is getting 9.7 9.8 it says on here roughly around 9.3 gigabits per second i can definitely tell you the network connection is set to about 10 gig your hard drive speeds or whatever you're using you may not be able to keep up but socket to socket you should be good for 10 gig okay all right so just wrapping this video up here real quick so this one right here like i said is the cal digit Thunderbolt 3 Ethernet 10 gig adapter. It works generally pretty well. We haven't had really any issues with it. If I had one upgrade or one hint of advice, if it gets a little warm freezing a lot for heavy transfers and stuff, I would just put it near like the cooling fan of laptop or if you have like one of those USB fans, just blow on it. I mean, it definitely helps because heat kills the tronics, right? So, but other than that, it doesn't have too many problems. If they're gonna make a version two, it would be nice if they made one with a little fan in it, which was whisper quiet. Obviously, that would be great. If they had another thing they could put on it, maybe a little power light saying that, hey, I'm powered on and it's working. Maybe they just expect you to touch it and feel that it's warm and you don't have to have a light. But the OWC one has a light, okay? That would be a different video. So we can look into that later. But the point is, it works great for 150 bucks and a good quality cable. And assuming you have the switch and everything else, you can get your MacBook Pro connected to a 10 gigabit network, okay? Doesn't have to be MacBook, connect your Mac mini, connect your iMac. If you have an iMac Pro, you already have 10 gig. But if you didn't spring an extra 100 bucks for the 10 gigabit port on whatever Apple device that you're buying, assuming it has the capability to do that, then you can buy one of these for 150 bucks after a thought. So the lesson there is really, if you're buying an iMac or a Mac mini, I would just spend the extra $100 to get the 10 gig port that's built into the computer. That way you don't have to worry about these dongles and things like that afterwards. But if you didn't need to buy one, I would go either go with this one or the OWC one, because they are both good and we've used them very thoroughly in the last few months. Okay. So hope this video helped you guys out and we'll see you guys next time.